Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we're starting a new series, How to Be, and where you learn how to master the individual traits of each of the 16 personalities. And today we're starting off with assertiveness, how to be as assertive as an ENTJ personality type. Now, ENTJs are listed as uh, scoring one of the highest for dominance and for the natural traits associated with assertiveness. That means that ENTJs in general have a high esteem of themselves and their own abilities and their own capacity. Now, why does the ENTJ chief or commander archetype really do so well in these areas? And how can you learn to be as good at confidence as an ENTJ? Now, first of all, it's not only ENTJs that lead in terms of assertiveness. ESTJs, ESFJs, and ENFJs all tend to mark themselves with a high confidence. And now, what does that really look like? Well, first of all, when you are more assertive, there are goods and bads with being assertive. And of course, you want to develop the positive traits of assertiveness while avoiding the pitfalls. So let's talk about that as well in today's video. Now, to start off, Assertiveness is marked by a high esteem of your own capacity, confidence in yourself, and belief in your own worth. And here you can see assertiveness shine in any form of group dynamic or any form of extroverted scenario. Assertiveness is also useful when you have a strong goal or a strong opinion or a strong belief that you want to argue for or push for towards the world, right? Now, people that are assertive are more likely to take a command in a group setting. They are more inclined towards leadership, but they don't have to be leaders. Most of all, they have to be strong in their own beliefs and in what they want, right? Now, Typically, you can see assertiveness as, for example, the belief that you will get the job if you go to a job interview, the belief that you will conquer your goals, overcome your obstacles, solve your problems, and deal with whatever needs to be dealt with. But it also comes from stemming in trust in yourself, right? Trust that you are right and that other people are wrong in a conflict or a discussion. Belief that you and your strength will prevail over other people, right? And here, there are many ways to develop assertiveness and to become more assertive and ways to learn from the ENTJ and their mindset. But what's the ENTJ mindset like and how can we understand that? First of all, it's absolutely imperative that you believe and understand that you have a right to expression. That means you have a right to say what you think and you shouldn't keep your words to yourself. You shouldn't keep your thoughts to yourself. You shouldn't hide what you feel from the world. You have an equal right to move in society and to participate in discussions and to be a part of the world just like anyone else. And if you want to be assertive, you have to genuinely believe that and understand that. You also have to understand the value of your voice and what you contribute. You have to believe that what you share is important and useful and that it could be potentially helpful for other people. It doesn't have to be correct. It doesn't have to be 100% the truth, but it could be what leads people a step further. And by you sharing how you think you help other people and you contribute to the intellectual process and the creative process where good ideas arrive. It's really ultimately about confidence in your worth and that you value and matter. Beyond that, you have a right to set boundaries. You have a right to autonomy. And I, what I mean with this is, Growing up, you might have been taught to let your parents decide everything for you. You might have never been allowed to express your opinion or to speak out or to say or do what you want. But as an adult, you have a right every right to stand up for yourself and to set your own boundaries and you're not inconveniencing other people or other people 
don't matter when it comes to what you feel. So if you feel that something is important to you and if you need something, you have a right to that and you have a right to speak out about that as long as it doesn't infringe on anyone else's right to do the same, right? Assertiveness also comes down to right to advocacy and defense, right? And here it comes down to in a conflict, your right to stand out for yourself and for to speak up for yourself or for other people. If you see somebody being bullied or persecuted or treated badly, would you stand up for that person or protect them or help them? If you saw somebody getting hurt somewhere or something bad happening, would you step in and intervene or would you just pretend you didn't see it, right? Here, you have to recognize how important assertiveness is and the importance of standing up for the, and defending people and protecting other people. People that are highly assertive often see themselves not as offenders or persecutors, they see themselves as defenders and protectors of themselves and also of other people around them. And this is also why people that are assertive are so popular and attract other people into their lives. Because when other people see them being very assertive, they think, here is somebody that can protect me if I need it. You know, here is somebody that will stand up for me. And of course, Remember that passion is a strength here. Speaking passionately about what you care about is important. So many times I hear people speak about their passions in kind of neutral and downtrodden words, looking down like, yeah, I kind of like this thing, or I have a bit of a passion for this, or I'm like a bit interested in this. Here, assertiveness would be like, allow yourself to feel passionate about what you do and what you think and what you want right? It's okay to be passionate and confident in yourself. It's okay to speak with fire and to show fire when talking about your passions and interests in areas where you've studied a lot. If you've studied something a lot, know some, a lot about something, have practiced something a lot, care a lot, and spend a lot of time on doing it. Yeah, there's no reason to play you know, coy and be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit good at that and I have some talent there. But yeah, you have to allow yourself to be passionate. Now, of course, there are problems with assertiveness. For example, it's a natural bias. Just like modesty, assertive people can overestimate themselves. When I see assertive people take personality tests, they will usually agree with every positive statement and disagree with every negative one. So assertive people are more likely to think of themselves in positive wording. I can do anything. I'm capable of anything. I'm, I would be able to do anything. I might not do it, but I can do it, you know. And here they will often exaggerate their own skills and abilities. And this is, of course, the downside. Of course, you should try to look at and, think and see yourself accurately. And it's okay to be honest and to admit and acknowledge when you're good at something, but also when you struggle in some area. Assertive people can find it hard to be vulnerable and to express doubt and to express uncertainty. And often they can feel they're not allowed to show weakness. And here it's important to remember that, yeah, every single person in the world has some strengths and some weaknesses. And so do you, you're not perfect, no person is. And you will always have areas to improve, areas to study more, areas to think more. And most importantly, assertive people can sometimes shut down criticism and negative feedback. They can create a yes man kind of culture where because you're so passionate, because you care so much, nobody ever allows or feels confident to question anything that you say or do. But of course, you want them to question what you say. You want people to challenge you. You want other people to tell you when you're wrong or when you're walking into a bad situation. Because if people tell you when you're wrong, yeah, you have a chance to learn something and to be more successful. So why wouldn't you want that, right? And this is why it's also equally important to cultivate modesty and to recognize the positive signs of modesty. And let's talk more about that in a future video. Most importantly, to develop assertiveness, find a skill or an area or a value or something you're very passionate about and allow yourself to feel at least assertive in these areas. These are going to be your comfort zone. In these areas, you're going to be the most confident, the most comfortable and the most secure. And here, I want you to build your assertiveness starting from this area, expanding outwards. Start with at least acknowledging your strengths and being honest about what it is that you can that nobody else can, right? Recognize when you have natural talents and strengths and abilities that other people don't. Recognize and speak 
honestly and confidently about those things. And also take time to develop more skills and to practice and improve. One reason why ENTJs are so confident is because they read a lot, spend a lot of time working, study a lot and push themselves hard to be skilled and to be better at what they do. And so the best recipe for assertiveness, natural, honest, authentic assertiveness is to genuinely be good, to genuinely be passionate, to genuinely feel strongly about something, to genuinely be skilled at some area. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comments below what you think about this video. And of course, don't forget to have a nice day.